next on the Love You More Show. Because this public scrutiny is really, really tough. That's your face on the vlog. Mm -hmm. That's your family that's watching this. Yeah. And everybody got a cousin that's just like, baby, you hurt. I'm coming through. Like, <laughs> Yo, what I had was to that stop like? my brother and them. <laughs> Can any man ever live up to that what in which you saw from your father when he gave his speech he actually said he was like you always said that you wanted a man like me you know and of course i'm in an interracial interracial relationship yeah. um he was like you always said that he was like honestly this is closest to me you gonna get my dad giving me some real talk hard love like listen you don't need to make it happen if that's not who god has for you god has someone else for you because if so you they would see you completely, you know, mm -hmm. and he's not seeing you and that's OK. I'm not the type to go mm -hmm. spread it on the Internet. I know it's mm -hmm. not good for some bloggers. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Love you more. Family, it's your nephew, Willie Moore Jr. And welcome to another amazing episode of the Love You More show. Um, can I be very honest with you? I just want to thank everybody for always supporting us. Make sure that you take full advantage of clicking that little notification bell hitting subscribe and comment as much as possible. Here's the thing that you probably don't know, baby. I'll be in the comments, commenting back to you guys. And here's the thing. Some of the times um, when you see that you left kind of a tough comment and then I kind of hit you back with a pretty tough comment too, baby, that is not AI or somebody else. That's me, huh? Yes, indeed. The one thing I love about the internet is that gives you the bravery and courage to say what you want to say. And it gives me the audacity to say what I want to say back. So keep it above board, okay? Family, you know, the young lady that I get the esteemed privilege to hang out with today, is literally one of the most relentless entrepreneurs, mothers, and more importantly, just a great woman. Um, many people knew her as the ex-fiance of, of amazing artist, Neo. Um, she has two amazing children, and now she's just walking into her own. I was in on an airplane, I'm about 30,000 feet up, and I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm doing notes. Katie, for some reason, when I'm on the airplane, I think a little better. I guess because I know that if people know I'm on the airplane, Playing, they won't be offended that I'm not answering the phone. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the airplane noise. And she hits my heart and I was just like, yo, she really has something to say, specifically to the ladies out there who have been through a whole lot in relationships and how you handle disappointment, misunderstandings, breakups, divorce is literally um, it's important because I see so many people on social media. I see so many people in life. Instead of bowing out gracefully, people attempt to defame each other. They make it a public spectacle. And a lot of them say amen right after they do some of the most harmful things to people. Come on now. Right? Come on. And so in the body of Christ, I want to make sure that we have a blueprint on how to handle adversity. So coming to the show today is a woman who handled adversity like none other. Mm -hmm. The one and only, Manietta Shaw. What's happening? Party hey, hey. too. Oh, oh, Let's yes. get that party in there too. Now. She married. Yes. I mean, really married. Nice ring. Thank by you. The way. I appreciate it. Indeed. So <laughs> glad to be hanging out with you today. Oh, thanks for having me, bro. Like, I appreciate it. When you hit me, I was like, of course, I'm going to figure it out and make yeah. it happen. I really appreciate that. So, oh, what we like to do on the Love You More show, my mm -hmm. a lot of shows, they have different icebreakers. Okay. Our icebreaker is actually music. The Love Ooh. You More show actually coincides with the Love You More series, which is a story that's loosely based on a misunderstanding, a breakup, and a divorce story. Wow. And I'm the curator of the conversation. Okay. So before we start the conversation, mm -hmm. I would like for you to bring your attention to the screen. Is there anybody out there, out there, out there ever lost a loved one like me? Go to 
feelings are real Talk to him Everybody got an encouraging word Lost my mom like yeah. a couple of years ago. Okay, and that's what I want to talk me. about. So yeah, what type right. what, what type okay. of woman is mom? Oh wow! Can we can we build from that perspective? Of course. Oh, she's a lady of of grace and just kindness and just genuine love. Yeah. And a lot of people, as well as yourself, when they see me and like my energy, and I'm genuinely a kind person, and I really want what's best for it everyone even people who hurt me you know mm -hmm. i know that it's something in them mm -hmm. and i want them to want to fix it so they can you know like remove the behavior of course i'm not perfect but i genuinely lead from a place of love and that's all because of my mom mm -hmm. linda b shell um and my father michael shaw so that's she was just a lady of grace and just super kind yeah so when you when you go through adversity, mm -hmm. how does Linda Shaw handle adversity? What part of her did you take with you throughout this journey? Because a lot of people would say in some of your responses, like, wow, she handled with so, handled it with so much class. Mm -hmm. I would have did A, B and C. How much of that is her? Um, honestly, all of it. All of it. Seriously. She's always had so much strength. Mm -hmm. In her. Um, and of course, that that part, thankfully, rubbed off on me. Mm -hmm. And just honestly, because I was blessed to to have my parents for, well, she passed. I was 42, 43 now. Um, a lot of times I wanted to respond. And, you know, the first thing, mm -hmm. your reaction, you're hurt. So you want to lash out. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, OK, I don't want to embarrass my parents. And then I don't want to be this bad example to my children. Mm -hmm. So I always knew even before kids, it was bigger than me. Yeah. Um, that's why I named one of my books bigger than me yeah. um, when I was going through the breakup because it's like my actions, like I have a responsibility. I always knew that. I don't know if it comes from, you know, going up in the church, my dad's at de of the de deacon board, head of the deacon board. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, having all that instilled in me, mm -hmm. you know, you want to do the right thing or do what feels right, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I've always had that. Yeah. I've always had that, you know? Yeah. Tell me about your father and what that relationship was like and what did Linda and your father's relationship look like? Oh my what gosh. type of example did you get the opportunity to see? Just seeing real love. Even when my mom, um, the past few months, she was in a, a, a center, a nursing home. Mm -hmm. And he went to visit her every day, stayed up there, as mm -hmm. long as he could. And they mm -hmm. were like, okay, time to go home. And he came back in the morning and he would just rub her feet, massage her, make sure she, like watching that. Mm -hmm. And then it be, even when she was well, just watching him just love her. Like I saw that example and that's what I wanted, you know, mm -hmm. in, in a man and for my children to have mm -hmm. that example that um, myself and my brothers have. It was just, a beautiful thing and yeah. they had a love that some people won't even get to experience and I was so blessed to experience that and to see that real love and yeah. um, that definitely shaped me into the woman that I am today 
Mm. Can any man ever live up to that what in which you saw from your father? I mean, yeah. Um, okay. My dad at the, <laughs> it's so funny, at the reception, not the reception, but the, what is it? The dinner before the, the wedding. Yeah. Come on, y'all. What is it called? The rehearsal. Thank dinner. you. That part. Rehearsal, yeah. not reception. Reception after. Yeah. Come on now, somebody. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so at the rehearsal yeah. dinner, shut up. Um, when he gave his speech, he actually said, he was like, you always said that you wanted a man like me, you know, and of course I'm in an interracial, interracial relationship. Yeah. Um, he's like, you always said that. He was like, honestly, this is closest to me. You going to get like just my husband's hard. And for my dad to say that and my husband's eyes just teared up, like, cause he knows the type of man my dad is. Yeah. Um, and for him, that was the biggest compliment ever. And that made me feel good as well yeah. to know that. Okay. Well, yeah. And, and he does remind me of my father. Like my father's heart is so big yeah. and just the energy that he put out into the world. It's just like, it's, it's just real. It's authentic. It's just, it's a loving feeling. Like mm -hmm. when you, you know, when you meet him, when you meet my husband, you'll see, you're like, oh, wow. You know, yeah. just good people. Like I just love good people and good people. So back in the day, I remember initially when I mm -hmm. first met you and then, of course, you know, we build, you know, friendship, yeah. doing whatever. Of course, yeah. Um, and I remember like that first interview, mm -hmm. I was watching and I remember my producers came in and they was like, yo, we got my yeah, the show. And they showed me a picture. I was like, oh, beautiful young lady. And, uh -huh. and then, of course, I always do my research. Yeah, like Shreveport, Bold, yeah, City. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. I know what type of person she is. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the younger version I mean, you know, you still look the same, but the younger version in terms of maturity after okay. all that had went on, like you were still pushing and working, but it was just something in your eyes that made me say, man, I really want to make sure that she stays safe or whatever. Aww. How hard sure. was it for you to really open up yourself to love again mm -hmm. after going through such a disappointment with a man that like literally you made a decision for your body? Mm -hmm. Like I ain't having no more kids because we decided we ain't going to yeah. have no more kids. Yeah. And then two months before it's time to say I do, he said, well, I don't think I want to do this or whatever happens. Mm -hmm. And now you have two beautiful children and you may have a desire. Like how easy or hard was it for you to accept somebody else into that space after dealing with such a hardship? Um, great question. It was extremely hard. And I knew that I had a lot of healing to do yeah. before I was ready to do that. Right. So I actually didn't like seriously date until I worked on me. Mm -hmm. Um, if that makes sense, I think it took maybe like two years and even that for me to even accept, because of course I had people coming at me and stuff, but I literally wouldn't see it. I wasn't at a space where I could accept it right. at all. And once, you know, did my healing, did my, you know, call my dad, he gave me some words, we pray, we, you know, meditate, I would meditate, like just, I had to do some real down home soul searching. You know, mm -hmm. it was a very difficult time and it wasn't just me. So it's like I didn't have the liberty of just falling out, giving up and yeah. breaking completely down. But of course, I would feel what I feel. But yeah. I would do that in the privacy of my home. And I'm not yeah. the type to go yeah. spread it on the Internet. I know it's yeah. not good for some bloggers. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> right, right. you know, I would deal right. with what we dealt with in, in house, if you might. Um but yeah, it took it took a while to open up and be ready for love. But it helped because I know what I didn't want, you know. Yeah. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay, like I'm out immediately, yeah. you know. So yeah, it took a it took a while and some work, a lot of work. Why not public though? Like mm -hmm. if it's because your story went so public, and I'm mm -hmm. really getting and I know you've already relived this. I promise we're gonna run right into oh, no, it's all this good. new I get beautiful it. life. Yeah. But I really want to hone in on the fact that. The story came out and it broke on all the vlogs, mm -hmm. all of this. And you're a girl from Shreveport, Bossier mm -hmm. City, yeah. a father who's head deacon, mm -hmm. a mama whose heart posture has always been to serve. Mm -hmm. How embarrassing was that? And then how did you handle that? Because yeah. this public scrutiny is really, really tough. That's your face on the vlog. Mm -hmm. That's your family that's watching this. Yeah. And everybody got a cousin that's just like, baby, you hurt. I'm coming through. Like, <laughs> Yo, I what had was to that stop like? my brother and them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, you got brothers. Like, if they're yeah, going to do right, one right. more thing. Like, so, so just kind of walk me through <sighs> the whole public part of it all mm -hmm. and how you were able, if you did, like, how did you, like, literally, I want to walk through it. Like, yeah. How did you navigate? Because you, it was the opposite for you. Mm. It was honestly, 
nobody but God. I can't even begin to even articulate yeah. because, mind you, when this happened, we still cohabitated. We we lived together for a year. And he's still in the house. John. Yeah, he was still in the house. Um, we were in uh, it was huge, huge house, but yeah. you know, separate rooms. And he was, you know, on the road all the time. So it didn't really. That's why it really didn't hit hard with the kids. Yes, they were younger, but. You know, he was never like in the house like every day, whereas if he had a normal nine to five, yeah, you know, for sure. so that was a blessing. Uh-huh. Um, but <laughs> it was hard. It was very hard because I had to see him when he came in and still I wanted that to work. You know, I had this example of my parents. I want that. I'm like, OK, well, maybe he's going through something because I'm like, well, I'm good. I worked on me like I'm straight. Why wouldn't he want me? You know what I mean? Right. Like what? What's going on? You know, I'm fun too. And I'm, you know, like, mm-hmm. hello, you know, so just, it took me realizing like, okay. And my dad gave me some real talk, hard love. Like, listen, like you don't need to make it happen. If that's not who God has for you, God has someone else for you because if so, you, they would see you completely, you know, mm-hmm. and he's not seeing you and that's okay. That's okay. It's nothing wrong with you, you know, because honestly, at that time, like, I'm thinking like, what is it? Is something wrong? Am I not? Should I do this? Do I fix this? And that's why a lot of people do try to fix themselves. But not no, no, it's not you necessarily that needs fixing. That's just not the person for you, you Mm -hmm. know? So thank God I have have the, you know, the the foundation that I I do because I do Mm -hmm. know it was that. Mm -hmm. Um, It was Oh, God, because like I said, him coming into the house, like so we would sometimes still go to the movies together. We would hang like because we were still friends through it all. Mm-hmm. And that's just I give it my upbringing because and I had to know that. Thank God he's being honest at this point because yeah. we could have been, you know, got married and did mm-hmm. this and been years and years. Well, yeah, look, anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying, right, right, you know, yeah. I'm just wow. still going through. Yeah. And then it could have hurt it. And even more, even mm-hmm. though I didn't think it could hurt worse than that, but it could have, you know, yeah. um, uh, just I'm now grateful. And I know that it was a lesson that I needed to learn. And it made me even more into the woman that I am today. Um, but it was it was a lot. And some people would be like, girl, you better than me. I would have did this. Yeah. Well, no, why? We had these write a book. beautiful like, kids. Class. Exactly. I wrote the book bigger than me. Keep class. And it wasn't like trashing it was just it told my side um and not even all just i gave some imperative details to help other people because mm-hmm. like you said like we need to know the other options you know we don't need to act on our first thought all the time so the like let's take a breather is, first thought could be off oh yeah oh okay. no trust me it was a, a a couple of situations where you know things would happen and i would like just and I'll catch myself, literally. It was the Holy Spirit. Like, come here, child. Come yeah, here, come my child. Back. Like, yeah. for real. Yeah. And I, I give it all to God. How important was your father's voice in all of this? Oh, my gosh. Uh, so important. So very important. Like, that, oh, that man, like, just gave me the real. Um, and, and even, because, um, Schaefer, you know, he's a he's a great guy. He is. Everybody has their stuff. Like, yeah. um, and at times, of course, we weren't as cool as we are now, but it yeah. took some time or whatever. And just the grace that my dad would give him. Mm-hmm. I remember we were all somewhere out of town um, with the kids and, you know, still we still do things together as we do now. And they were in L.A. Uh, I don't remember, but. I was really hurt and it was one of those nights and he just was like, Mo, what are you going to do? Like, literally, this is when like you got to just read this scripture, read this book, then come, come talk and to me. And that's your dad? My dad. Yeah. He gave me the hard love, the like in your face, like this isn't it. You know, some dads would have went and beat yeah. him down or got the shotgun, you, you know? Just, yeah, exactly. Why shotgun? you do my baby like that? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. but He's still like, you know, he don't play about me, but he's just like, listen, this is what you need. And it's good to have a great relationship for the, exa- you know, to be the good example to the children. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just keep this. Sorry. Let's just keep this on the up and up. And like you, you have to like, what are you going to do? More Love You More podcast after this. Hey, Willie Mo Jr. here. Listen, as you can see, I'm in the office working. I hope you're enjoying 
this amazing episode. As you can see, it's a lot of plans on the wall and we're working really, really hard to give you the best product ever. But do me a favor. Can you subscribe to this channel for me real quick? And then I want you to share this episode with at least 10 people. Leave a comment, okay? So subscribe, share it, leave a comment. Back to the episode. Flat out. Now back to the Love You More podcast. Let's just keep this on the up and up and like you... You have to like, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You can't make them. What are you going to do? Like literally. And I'm just like, well, I don't know. I want it to work. You know, yeah. ugly cry. <laughs> I want it yeah. to no, work. I ain't do anything. You know, yeah. it's like, okay, are you done now? Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. And, and still he just, he speaks so much life into me and he reminds me to speak life into myself. Yeah. And that's the game changer. When it came to the children, mm -hmm. how are you, how do you break the news that life is about to be different? Mm -hmm. Like, was that, was that a gradual process to be able to communicate to your children and say, I know that we're used to dad being, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but now it's going to be like this. How did you two come to, to a consensus to break the news and how did you do it? Well, um, like I said, because they were younger, it was easier. Mm -hmm. And because he was, you know, traveling a lot, mm -hmm. we just, we had the conversation together. And they seemed to get it, but they were younger. Mm -hmm. And we just told them that, okay, this is mommy's house. And sometimes you're going to go to daddy's house, you know? And so they were kind of like, oh, okay. You know, so mm -hmm. that's how they wrap their minds around that. But of course, the older they got and they, you know, see more things we had to have. And because of, you know, his situations mm -hmm. and then me getting engaged and getting married, we had to have a lot of conversations yeah. um, to make sure that they were good and they were informed and not being informed by their little friends at school or something like right. that. So very important. So we seem to have done a great job, I will say, on yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we, we do the best that we can because our kids are the number one. All right. So I seen that you good. I mean, really great answer. So I seen that you two that you took them out to a concert. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the babies got on stage. Oh, and yeah. Then, then my daughter, Maddie. Yeah. yeah. So Maddie gets on stage. She's yeah. now 12, 11, 12. She's 13 now, but she was 12. Okay. Then. Yeah. yeah. So she's uh -huh. 12 years yeah. old. She's doing yeah. that. And you, did it take you a while to be able to see him in his element and now know that you're on the outside of what he's now built? Um, I would say. It it happened. The transformation happened in my healing um, mm -hmm. early on, honestly, yeah. even before I found um, the love of my life. It happened earlier. Oh. Like, and I, I, I know that my dad, like those conversations and everything, even talking to my mom about it, um, that helped a lot mm -hmm. because I was able to do things like that because um, a lot of people can't go face. Yeah. Them, even with the kids, they're like, okay, well, let's yeah. meet up at the Burger King or the and well. You're going that's yeah, you go on my business. I'm gonna go. Yeah. And for me, it was it was different. Like, I don't know. I just let my in intuitive side lead, you know, yeah. and that's what I felt I was supposed to do. And so I did it. In the beginning, I did it while it was hurting me, but I knew that it was a bigger picture. I did it for a bigger picture. I sacrificed me that's and my feelings nice. for a bigger picture. And now, oh my gosh, it was, it was worth it. Like yeah. I'm seeing the fruits of my labor for that, you know, cause I could have did, uh, you know, could have blasted, could have did this. Even in the book, I didn't blast. I just put, you know, I outed myself more than him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, I'm not perfect. I know I'm nice and everything, but everyone has their things, you know? Um, KD, who is this one? Oh, shut up. <laughs> no, and let me tell you why. Let me tell you why I say that. Okay. Because. Being able to have a four nine. So what I see right now is okay. like, okay, cool. There is such an importance of a father to be able to speak to a daughter or son to mm -hmm. kind of help them in some of their most vulnerable moments. Yeah, or just someone. Yeah. yeah, yeah somebody yeah, to step figure. in yeah. or somebody that you honor. Exactly. You know, somebody's yeah. voice that you the honor. The void of that is honestly seen all over the world. You see what happens when that person does not have that sounding board. Yeah. Honestly. Or the right sounding board, because it's got to mm. be some sounding board, and Come they're just like, now. "Well, girl, you did it, and you already on you that first line." You have those rah rah. Like, a few of my friends, like, "What he did? What? Let go yeah. get him!" And you know, part of me wanted to jump. I'm like, "I am from Shreveport. Let's be clear. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm in the call, baby, Sit Neil, Java Jaws, Neil. It's Come on, on the radio. <laughs> like for real, I know, you know. So, so I do, baby I do want to, I do want, I do want to hit right here because this is just so, so important. Yeah. What do you think would have happened to the relationship and the children mm -hmm. if you would have decided to go with that first mind? Oh, my God. Oof. 
it would not be good. Um, and that's a lot of mistakes that people make when they're getting a divorce or separating. Um, they don't put the children's feelings in the forefront um, and they lead by ego. Like he hurt me. So I'm gonna hurt him by taking the kids away or by making it hard or by airing out everything, knowing that your children will one day be able to read this and they're going to see, they're going to see everything. Mm -hmm. So just make sure if you're cool with that, mm -hmm. so be it. But if you're not cool with that, let's, let's take a different route. You know, mm -hmm. um, it just, it wouldn't have been what it is today. I will say that 100%. And um, we were together on Thanksgiving, part of Thanksgiving. We, you know, travel to see, see him. Like we went to the Kennedy center when he did his like, um, concert with the orchestra. I mean, my husband, everybody, like, it's just like, and it's really a good feeling, you know, and it's not always rainbows, butterflies every time, but mm -hmm. we have the hard conversations, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, okay, well, can you spend a little more time? Can you do this? Can they come on the road? They're older now. They can go with you on some of these, you know, mm -hmm. like we mm -hmm. have those conversations. Um, and now he has more children. So, and I include them too, because it's all you one big. The older, um, the the other, other children? Yeah, they are super, super close. So either when he's in town or if, if he's not there with his mom um, and sister and um, they all like, we all go, I took uh, the, one of their sons to, <laughs> you sound silly. Hold to, on, Paul. <laughs> see, what you don't understand, I want to go back to the beginning of this conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the beginning, I've seen that she made a decision with her body to not have children with a man after the two. Mm -hmm. Right. And now you are now saying, bring the children, everybody come. I want all of my, all of the babies to be close. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm TT Mo to, to all them. Mo. Yeah. Because it's just like those babies didn't have nothing to do with this mess. Nothing at all. You teaching classes? <laughs> hey, I need to. I do coach a little on the side, but next, I might need to go the ahead. Next <laughs> coach of women who have been going through everything. <laughs> well, keep it classy. Shaw. Well, keep it classy. No, you got to do it. The keep it, keep yeah, it classy you know, I got the whole brand. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I do it in my little coaching things, but yeah. And it's needed. It honestly is because I'm looking out here. I'm like, oh, my Lord. You wifey material, like, though. Thank you. I appreciate that's, that it. That was cool. I appreciate that. Yeah, but it's just like, let's be very clear yeah. and transparent. And, you know, we, we go back. Yeah, keep it And I'm going to keep it a buck. Um, when I got the phone call, the text or whatever, at this point, I don't even remember how I was given the information from him about, oh, by the way, we're pregnant. You know, it was like, what? And then right when I would be like, Lord, now I pray, I go in my prayer room, da, 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 I pray and cry at that point and still walking out, walk out into the world with my head up high because at the end of the day, you're not finna have me all the way down. But yes, I'm gonna feel these feelings, you know, mm -hmm. but I got, I'm gonna keep moving. I can't just, I gotta take care of these little babies, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but oh my gosh. And then I'm like, okay, well, I got through that. All right, I'm good. But well, he better not do this because if this happened, I ain't going to be able to make it. I ain't going to be able to keep it classy no more. Like, yeah. how much more I can take, Lord? You know? Yeah. Then it's another thing. thing. Uh, uh, I'm like, whoo. But the key thing is God still had me. God was still holding me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. This is just part of my story. I made that decision. Yeah. We made it together. But, you know, I made it. Um, because I believed in something else. Yeah. But now I'm going to fully believe in him. And I'm just going to walk, keep walking, keep going, and keep praying so I don't lose my dang old mind. And, you, and so now you have this new husband who mm -hmm. now knows about everything. How did you all meet? Um, he's actually from the surrounding Treeport areas. Oh, he's from, um, from Louisiana? Well. Yeah, he is. He cool? He, can, yes he, he cooked can. white or black? He cooked black because his he daddy cooked like, black too. He kind of so, like a black whatever that means, but yeah. <laughs> face on the cool. He looks smooth. I ain't never met he's him. He's definitely invited to the cookout. He might start the cookout. And invite, you know, like he's cool. Yeah, you remember once you, you talked to me about him? You probably don't remember this. Wait. Wait. Oh, we did talk about him. He was like, but. Wow. He's, yeah, I was like, he's what? You know, he's, a, he's other. He's, he's other. other. That's, That's what you said. You said he's other. And I was just like, that don't damn matter. Yeah. As long as. But, you know, but I told you like, we were what? smiling though. 
I was. You yeah, was like, but he's other. And I was like, but you smiling though. <laughs> no, other is not a bad thing. It's yeah. just, you know, I'm about the heart and I'm about how you treat me, yeah. you know, even more so now, you know. Um, <laughs> and it's a beautiful thing. So I I met him briefly in 1999 through my cousin. Okay. Um, and so, and maybe that's what made it easier too. Like he's been mm-hmm. friends with my cousin for like 20 plus years, you know? So it's like, yeah. oh, okay. Well, I know he's good people, good people, with, you know, yeah. my cousin, right? And so um, I actually was dating someone else at the time, but on a break and yeah, met him. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, he what put was the me first. Moment? Just his consistency. Okay, consistency. Um, huge. His communication. Hello. Communication yes, with you. Consistency. Yes, CC. Come on, CC. And just, honestly, his support. And not just me. He would, like, change plans, um, like, leave visiting his daughters and come to show up for my kids' soccer practice. Like, what? You know, like that said so much to me because I knew after that, like, I'm like, I'm a package deal regardless. If you can't, you know, accept my kids, like we definitely ain't got nothing to talk about, you yeah. know, um, and just how he like supported me and my children. That was. So that how was do you it. support a woman who's been through so much? Like, um, so I guess, consi- so you're saying consistency, yeah, communication consistent. and support. Yeah, keep your especially word. Especially with the, with the children too. Yes, of course. Okay, it's- I hope you're getting this. I wanted to make sure that I made a lesson. <laughs> Editing, make sure you put CCS. CCS. On okay, yeah, it's a great system. <laughs> no, it really is. It really is. And when I was, you know, I did the balancing act. Gosh, I'm being so real on here. Gosh, there really you go. Because, yeah. you know, then. and... <sighs> Yeah, those pros outweigh, you know, yeah. and yeah, it was a, it was clear as day. I'll just say that. Was it so? So mm-hmm. I know what your dad said mm-hmm. at the wedding, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but what did your daddy say when you told him, mm-hmm. "Hey, I, I, he's the other too." Oh, I didn't say that. You didn't no, say that. But no, you know, my parents know me, and they yeah. know like I'm like I have friends of every yeah. ethnicity. Like that's just who they I from am. Though, for yeah, me. yeah, yeah. My mom from Alexandria. Oh yeah. So let me just tell you something. Yeah, I know. But I yeah. didn't know we was. I'm sorry for cutting off because <laughs> some people do that. But I just want to just just set it up for I those know who don't know. So we sitting there. <laughs> shout out to my 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 cousin. I ain't gonna say his name, <laughs> but she married. She okay. married a, 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 a what white you say, man. A other that's no, it's a white man. Like <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Yeah, Caucasian male love him. Shout out to my cousin. Mm-hmm. I love him to life. But I did not know how much our conversations consisted of, of race. Until we was at the Thanksgiving table. Yes. And my and my mom is there and my auntie's there. And you're like, all they do is da 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 And here I am leaning to him, not you. Yeah, I yeah. You. Oh, I've She's had a couple of times like that. Right. <laughs> and we all pinching each other like, that don't go here no more. So like how like how did your dad and mom adjust to the fact that this oh is gonna be God. different? Joe. We've all heard. Yeah. Don't bring them home if you can't use oh they call. You remember that? Yes, I remember that. That is hilarious. <laughs> that was that. <laughs> I went parents, to Ole Miss, and my mama right. told me my parents never said bring that. Them call. If you don't the bring them home, home, you if can't, you can't use, use they call. <laughs> I said, Mama, what? You going to Ole Miss? I'm I done. know what you're going for. <laughs> I said, I'm going to get education. Uh Uh-huh. Really? Shut your mouth. That's what she said. Oh, my. My parents never said that, though. They really, I've never heard that. They're from a different part of Louisiana. I mean, it's it's a rhyme. Now, some cousins in them and auntie, uncles and said, but yeah, my parents never said that. But yeah, they just, they know. And you tell them and he says. He, um, I think I introduced, he came by the house because, of course, when we would go home. He's going to Homer to visit his um, family and I'll go over there. And. Back and forth, like he met him, he felt his energy, felt his vibe, and it was all good. The man of God, he fit said, right in. I think he, he fit did. right in. He's acceptable. He's acceptable. <laughs> so you go there, and now right we in. have to take it to the children. Mm-hmm. They've already seen him at practice a few times, mm-hmm. and they're kind of noticing mama's getting a little better energy. And they're like, "Who is this guy? When did you break the news to them that this is going to be something that's going to be a lot more serious?" Um. I feel like they knew once they met um, his youngest daughter Mm. um, and they clicked and they were asking us, when are we going to be sister and brothers? So that's when we knew we're like, wow. Oh, that's good. Like, wow. Like, 
seriously. Yeah. So yeah, once they met and they knew, they're like, oh, okay, this is mommy's boyfriend. Mommy, okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, when basically they were rushing us, like, okay, when we gonna make this official? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, because we want her to be our sister, and that was the most beautiful thing ever. Now we got the big one. Yeah. I'm a man. Make a few dollars. <laughs> I don't make Neo money, though. Shut Let's get that out of the way. I don't make Neo money. You would just bail. So I had to go. I had to say, okay, cool. Ah, one day I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to meet this guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it takes a very strong man to have the confidence to be able to steward such a woman of your stature. Thank you. And knowing that on the back side of everything, because a lot of times we very financial. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, if we ain't hitting the bag like we supposed to, it's kind of like she's a little out of my league. She probably <laughs> used to escort gold. She's going to get a strong STK steak with me. Okay. Not the Australian thing that they come over and be like, we have the best to this to this. You're going to get that one that's on stop, the menu. Stop it. Not that right one. Right in the back. Yeah, not, not the one where he's like, and this. You know how you come out with this and yeah. this. And Ooh. we have this. I was like, the this, this. <laughs> on this, this the, menu. That's Right? Whatever yeah. this one with the yeah with the price on there, not that two. Not the one that says market price. Yeah, no, we don't want price. a market price. So that's probably what you're gonna have to come to. And I know that you could probably, when you was out with Neo, you probably could be like, well, he's doing this and this, and you just like that and that. But it's not happening here. Okay, let's get that out the way. Oh. So now he has to meet this oh my God. powerhouse. Mm -hmm. When did you make the decision to say, wow? You guys have to meet because I'm very serious about this. Um, I don't recall when it was, but when they did, it was it was all good. Yeah, yeah, it it worked out. And fast forward to now, they take the kids out together. Come on, without me, just like, like, it's just like make some noise in the building. <laughs> they take them out together. Y'all can yell. Come on. That's I mean, good. it's just you know, yeah. if if and that's I commend them a lot. Because it's a lot of ego, especially dealing with men. Yes. Um, and then I, I will definitely give my husband huge props but because coming, you know, behind Neo, like you said, Neo this and everybody and all, everybody want to bring him up. Like, you have to be a confident man, even yeah. before him, to to date me. Yeah. You know, you got to be a confident man. And he is. And I love it. it's a beautiful thing. It I really is. And he can hold his own, too. Yeah. I can. I order a lot of steaks market price with him. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, and it's it's a great thing. He's, you know, he's a go-getter. Yeah. And I, I love that. Yeah. Um, but, I yeah, know, like, I, I love their relationship. It's cool. It's cool. I just want to tell you, mm -hmm. I want you to give yourself a lot more credit. Oh, okay. I, I received that. I want you to do that. Okay. You can't see yourself mm. the way... We saw you today. Oh, wow. I think sometimes you don't give yourself. Mm. Um, going through going through the going through divorce and seeing some of the things. I mean, because the way I handle this, I, everybody deals with grief the way they handle grief. Oh. And but to Amen. see to see somebody do it and having such a mindset that says there's something on the other side of mm -hmm. this that I'm gonna fight for versus fighting. Yeah, in this immediate in right that I miss this ultimate thing. Of course, because it's so hard. You can get stuck there and get complacent, yeah. but you, it's nothing in there. There's no victory in there. It's victory on the other side. Yeah. So sure. so you have this whole keep it classy movement. Mm -hmm. Tell me about, although this book, you know, mm -hmm. came out a few years ago. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it's time to really resurface because now after COVID and all of that, yeah. I think there has to be something for some place where women get a chance to lay their burden down because mm -hmm. I see that there's something to say. Mm. I see that there's something that has to get out. And yeah. some people are choosing to share narratives and while they're still wounded mm. and they're bleeding on people who have not cut them. Ooh. You just said a mouthful. And I just 100%. think you you had I don't and I'm not saying like I'm sure if we heard from Neo and mm -hmm. even your husband, because I'm sure you've shared some things. It's like, I didn't get that part right. Mm -hmm. But in the totality of it all, it's like you had the main thing, the main thing. Yeah. Thank you. That that means a lot. If there was one nugget coming out the book for mm -hmm. women right now who may have suffered from heartbreak, maybe the man was absolutely wrong. Maybe mm -hmm. there were some things that that they did everything right and it just didn't work out or vice versa. Like, what would you say to a woman right now who's looking at those two children like you did Staying in a home, thinking that I've already planned my life, mm 
Mm. I know what he does. I'm going to be a great support system to him. Mm -hmm. Financially, I know where I'm going to be because I'm just going to support him. And you Mm -hmm. have given your life to someone Mm -hmm. and then it changes and you choose just the heart posture of humility. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that woman who's dealing with this mental anguish and this loneliness and being quite frank, they're afraid. Mm. Honestly, (laughs) breathe. Get a great relationship with your heavenly father because mm-hmm. that's going to pull you through it and keep going. Like keep going because it's so easy to give up mm-hmm. um, through breakups, through whatever, through loss, mm-hmm. um, any kind of loss. It's, it's easy to give up. Just say I can't, especially when stuff has been hidden, you left and right. Like, mm-hmm. OK, the easiest thing to do is just throw in the towel. Mm-hmm. Like, why? Like I quit. But just look into your children's faces and just know that you can't quit. And there is a bigger picture and it does get better on the other side. I'm a living testimony. Y'all, <laughs> for real, let me let me look at you and talk to you. No, yeah. just find your strength because it's in you and keep going. Because if you stop, you're never going to get to the other side. You're never going to get the reward. And it's always risk. Um, just, and it's easy to lose yourself. I lost myself, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can still support someone and not lose you. Yeah. So that's a big part, I would say. Yeah. To still have you. Still so you fix that then make sure. In this oh, new relationship. 100%. You got you. Yeah. yeah. yeah you're going to you you have to, you know, support me. You know, that's why yeah. I mean, like, he supports me so much because that was a non negotiable. Like, I'm never giving all of me into anyone yeah. ever again. They live off your surplus. I love it. Exactly. This like, is a new person for me. You know, <laughs> like, I ain't seen you in a couple years. I know. I promise you, when you left, really? I told Big Me and my producer at that time, I was like, bro, we got to protect her at all costs, Aww. bro. But now I'm just like, oh, no, we're going to protect her, but she got it. <laughs> She all right. She, <laughs> she got cool. this. No, no, right. she got this. And I and I just want to tell you, I thank God for your husband mm-hmm. because if you're a reflection of him oh. and what he's done, I felt like I met him today. And so, oh, wow. bro, I haven't met you perfectly. I get the opportunity to, but I just appreciate you being a, such a great representation of such a great man. And um, it it speaks to it speaks to a man who understands who's he who he is. Mm-hmm. Number one in God, and then of yeah. course number two, understanding his purpose in the earth. Not trying to be nothing, but being all yes. that I am and supporting my woman to the best of my ability. Mm-hmm. And um, KD told me he said, "Man, he probably the coolest, oh. coolest guy you ever met in your life." <laughs> right, Girl, KD. Look like you can. He is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, I'm gonna put a bow on this thing if it's okay, KD. Can I put a bow on there? Good stuff. So you know, I I just as I, as I'm sitting there. It's three things that come out. Number one, to all my fathers out there, I want to tell you it's not too late to communicate with your daughters or your sons. Mm. It's something on the inside of us as men that if we take too much time to stay away, that we feel like that we don't also have a voice. Here's the thing. A voice of honor starts with the three things that she said. Mm. She said consistency, right? That he can communicate and that he can support. So if we get the CCS system that she created today, Mm. even as a father, if you can communicate, right? Like if you can be consistent and you can support at any time in that relationship, I believe that reconciliation can happen. Mm. As I listen to her conversation, every time that she got to a tough spot, as a journalist, a person who want to pull the goods out of a person, there was always a strong protection when she brought up her father. Mm-hmm. It was like I was going through this, this, and then boom, the mm-hmm. father. And then I did this, then I talked to my father. Mm-hmm. It literally stopped me in my tracks because I knew that a father had three roles in any relationship to priest, provide, and protect. Mm-hmm. And he did all three. Mm-hmm. So, fellas, I want you to step up to the plate no matter how long you've been gone. Number two, the one thing that I picked up is that, ladies, I am a man, and it's nothing that I can tell you because I don't. I listen, I'm a man's man. I believe if God made anything better than a woman, he kept it for himself. That's how much of a man that I am. But I want you to hear the voice of a woman who did not focus so much on the immediate that she missed the ultimate as it pertains to her children, her future, and the life that she might not even have seen in her head, but she knew that God had promised something bigger for her. So maybe right now, if feels so good to get it off your chest Mm -hmm. and in the social media age in which we live in there's always somebody who's gonna cheer you on if you stand 
in the middle of a Falcons game while they're playing and you bring a table and you say, I love the Cowboys. You're going to go viral and there's going to be <laughs> some Cowboy fan that's going to support you. And they're going to be like, let's go Cowboys. But they always miss the bigger picture that you interrupted a game that on national TV, you decided to do something that embarrassed not only you, but your family legacy and lineage. There's always gonna be somebody there to support. So the question becomes, is can you go back to number two and see something bigger than your immediate situation mm. and circumstance? Listen, we're Ooh. living in an age right now where so many people have a voice and so many people have an opinion that if you are not careful, you will not hear wisdom, you'll hear culture. And when culture overshadows wisdom, that ego, as we call it, edging God out, it will edge God out and you will never get the beautiful opportunity that she has to see two powerful men come together and go drop off the chill. <laughs> right. To, for her to have a genuine smile on her face, to change things up and say, listen, I'm a different person who's now set up borders. How can you set up borders later if you don't start building the building blocks today? Mm. I think it is a beautiful opportunity and a beautiful example for you to do something different. I know you hurt. I know you have pain. I know what he or she did was absolutely wrong. But it's an old song that said, two wrongs don't make a right. And the Bible says in Proverbs 15 and one that a gentle answer will always turn away wrath. If you want that wrath to go away, mm. be gentle. I want to challenge you to subscribe to this amazing channel. Make sure you share this with as many people as possible. Thank you to our guest, Mayetta Shaw. She has been nothing but amazing. And I learned something today. You say, Willie Mo Jr., what you learned? I learned that it don't matter what people call you. It only matter what you ask. Come on now. All right? Keep it locked right here. Flat out. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Y'all going to see these little claws. KD, back it up a little bit. Y'all going to see these. Y'all going to see these. Come on, come on. You better get it now because we're going back to the stove. You did not say that. Watch what the Lord did. Woo! Dope episode. So listen, coming up next week, we get the opportunity to talk about sex. Yes, sex. We talking about it. Um, it's our precursor to our love month, which is February. So make sure that you subscribe, leave a comment and share. And here's the thing. We are building 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 but i can't build without you for about 10 people if you don't mind can you click the link in the description of this video and can you click the patreon right become a patreon member it's only ten dollars a month right ten dollars a month it's gonna help us out so so much because we got a lot of great things that are planned like live shows that are going to be coming down the pipelines of course we're going to be in different cities so you can be a part of that and last but not least I got to ask you some questions about some of the guests. Maybe there's some questions that you want to give me so I can ask the guests as they come. So here's the thing. I need your help. So make sure that you do three things for it. Subscribe, share, leave a comment, well, four. And then last thing, um, maybe it's about 10 of you all who can do $10 a month to keep this production moving the way it should. Okay? So just go in the description of this video and be a part of my Patreon. Don't just do it for free. S subscribe and actually be a part of it. All right, thank you. Flat out. Love you more. Love you more. Love you more.